Hello students, this is Pathology, Chapter 9, Part 1. Oral Manifestations of Systemic Diseases Many systemic diseases are reflected in the oral mucosa, maxilla, and mandible, and these manifestations can include ulceration or mucosal bleeding, Immunodeficiency can lead to opportunistic diseases such as infection and neoplasia. Bone disease can affect the maxilla and mandible. Systemic disease can cause dental and periodontal changes. Also, drugs prescribed for a systemic disease can affect the oral tissues. Local factors may be involved in the manifestation of systemic diseases in oral mucosa. The mucosa may be more easily injured, mild irritation and chronic inflammation may cause lesions that otherwise would not occur, endocrine disorders can be manifested, disorders of red and white blood cells, disorders of platelets and other bleeding and clotting disorders, and immunodeficiency disorders can also have an effect on oral tissues. Endocrine disorders include hyperpituitarism, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, hyperparathyroidism, diabetes mellitus, and Addison's disease. Clinical features and oral manifestations of hyperpituitarism. It affects men and women in their 40s. It includes facial changes such as enlargement of the maxilla and mandible which can cause separation of teeth and malocclusion, enlargement of the nasal bones, enlargement of the maxillary sinus which leads to deepening of the voice, and mucosal changes can show up as thicker lips and larger tongues. This is a picture showing macroglossia. Hyperthyroidism is also known as thyrotoxicosis or Graves' disease. It results from an excess of production of thyroid hormone. Graves' disease is an autoimmune disorder in which antibodies Thyroid stimulating immunoglobulins stimulate the thyroid cells. Other causes are thyroid hyperplasia, tumors, pituitary gland disease, and metastatic tumors. The features are an enlarged thyroid or go goiter, exophthalmus or eyes that are bulging out, anxiety, weakness, restlessness, and cardiac problems. The oral features are that it may lead to premature exfoliation of deciduous teeth in children and premature eruption of permanent teeth. Osteoporosis may affect the alveolar bone. Caries and periodontal disease may appear and develop more rapidly, and they also can manifest a burning tongue. Oral manifestations of hypothyroidism in infants, thickened lips, enlarged tongue, delayed eruption of teeth. In adults, an enlarged tongue. Oral manifestations of hyperparathyroidism includes loosening of teeth, unilocular or multilocular well-defined radiolucencies, a ground glass appearance and loss of lamina dura. Microscopically, the lesions appear to be a central giant cell granuloma. The lower left shows the ground glass appearance and loss of lamina dura. The picture on the right shows the microscopic appearance. Oral complications of non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Oral candidiasis, mucormycosis, bilateral asymptomatic parotid gland enlargement, xerostomia, periodontal disease, accentuated response to plaque, 
slow wound healing, and increased susceptibility to infection. The considerations for dentists and dental hygienists. Periodontal disease. There are significant complications with diabetes. Periodontal disease aggravates the control of diabetes. Significant prognostic or predictive clinical markers exist linking periodontitis and diabetes. Uncontrolled diabetes equals uncontrolled periodontal conditions. Clinical features of Addison's disease. Bronzing of the skin, melanotic macules on the oral mucosa, and these are treated with steroid replacement therapy. Disorders of red blood cells and hemoglobin and disorders of white blood cells as well as bleeding disorders can have clinical manifestations. Anemia shows pallor of skin and oral mucosa, angular chylitis, erythema and atrophy of oral mucosa, loss of filiform and fungiform papilla on the dorsum of the tongue. This is an image of the tongue from a person who suffers from iron deficiency anemia. This is the tongue of a person with pernicious anemia. Notice the angular chylitis on the corners, the commissures of the lip, the pallor of the mucosa, painful, atrophic, and erythematous mucosa, mucosal ulcerations, loss of papilla on the dorsum of the tongue, and they also can have a burning and painful tongue. This is vitamin 12, B12 deficiency anemia, and the oral manifestations are indistinguishable from those of pernicious anemia. Thalassemia, or Mediterranean or Cooley's anemia, is a group of inherited disorders of hemoglobin synthesis. It is an autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. The heterozygous form involves one gene, may be mildly symptomatic or asymptomatic. The homozygous form, which means there are genes on both chromosomes involved, is associated with severe hemolytic anemia. Clinical manifestations are yellow skin, fever, malaise, weakness, and large spleen and liver, prominent cheekbones, depression of the bridge of the nose, a prominent maxilla, protrusion or flaring of the maxillary anterior teeth, and the radiographs may show a salt and pepper pattern. There's also thinning of the lamina dura and circular radiolucencies in the alveolar bone. Sickle cell anemia is an inherited blood disorder predominantly seen in black or Mediterranean or Asian individuals. The red blood cells develop a sickle shape when there is a decrease in oxygen, which can be triggered by exercise, exertion, administration of general anesthetic, pregnancy, or even in sleep. In sickle cell anemia, there is a loss of trabeculation and large irregular marrow spaces appear. Changes in skull trabecula radiate outward. Celiac sprue, also known as celiac disease or gluten sensitive enteropathy, is a chronic disorder that is triggered by sensitivity to wheat gluten. Ingestion of wheat gluten causes injury to the intestinal mucosa, which may cause malabsorption of nutrients and a resulting anemia. Clinical manifestations include diarrhea, nervousness, paresthesia of the extremities, painful burning tongue, atrophy of papilla, and ulceration of oral mucosa. The patients must avoid wheat gluten, and oral manifestations resolve when the systemic disease is controlled. Aplastic anemia is a severe depression of bone marrow activity, which causes a decrease in all circulating blood cells. The primary aplastic anemia, the cause is unknown. Secondary is a result of a drug or chemical agent. 
The oral manifestations include infection, spontaneous bleeding, petechiae, and purpuric spots. Polycythemia is characterized by an increase in the number of circulating red blood cells. There are three forms, primary, secondary, and relative. The oral manifestations are the oral mucosa may appear deep red to purple, gingiva may be edematous and bleed easily, there are submucosal petechiae, ecchymoses, and hematoma formation. Disorders of white blood cells include agranulocytosis, cyclic neutropenia, and leukemia. Agranulocytosis is a significant reduction in circulating neutrophils. Leukopenia is an abnormally low white blood cell count. Neutropenia is a reduction in the number of circulating neutrophils. Clinical features and oral manifestations include oral infections, oral necrotizing ulcerations, excessive oral bleeding, rapid destruction of teeth supporting structures, lymphadenopathy, jaundice, and fever. Leukemia is a malignant neoplasm, neoplasm of hematopoietic stem cells characterized by an excessive number of abnormal white blood cells in the circulating blood. It is of unknown origin and some are investigating viruses. Oral manifestations include gingival enlargement, oral infections, bleeding gums, petechiae, ecchymoses, toothache, and acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis. Purpura is a reddish blue or purplish discoloration of skin or mucosa from spontaneous extravasation of blood. It may be due to a defect or deficiency in blood platelets. It may be due to capillary fragility. Blood may ooze from gingival margins without the presence of gingivitis or inflammation. The clinical manifestations of thrombocytopenic purpura include spontaneous gingival bleeding, petechiae, clusters of petechiae or purpuric spots, and ecchymoses. You can also see in non thrombocytopenic purpura, spontaneous gingival bleeding, petechiae, ecchymoses, and hemorrhagic blisters. Hemophilia is a disorder of blood coagulation which results in severely prolonged clotting time. It's caused by a deficiency in plasma proteins involved in coagulation. The oral manifestations are spontaneous gingival bleeding, petechiae, ecchymosis, and risk of hemorrhage after oral surgery and scaling. Immunodeficiency can involve the different parts of the immune system either alone or together and may involve a deficiency in cell mediated or humoral immunity. It may also involve deficiency in phagocytosis. Primary immunodeficiency is of genetic origin. Secondary immunodeficiency comes from another underlying disorder. Oral manifestations of therapy for oral cancer. Oral cancer can be treated with surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or combination, and side effects do occur. Mucositis during radiation therapy. Mucositis begins about the second week of therapy and subsides a few weeks after completion. It's painful and appears as an erythematous and ulcerated mucosa. The patients may have difficulty eating, pain on swallowing, and loss of taste sensation. During radiation therapy, destruction of major salivary glands can occur and result in xerostomia. These patients are more prone to rampant caries and oral candidiasis. They are also prone to osteoradionecrosis. This concludes Pathology, Chapter 9, Part 1.